Dragon's Dogma 2 is an absolutely massive game. It's so big and contains so many different systems and mechanics that I wish I knew about before I started playing because it would have made my playthrough so much easier. With that in mind, I compiled a list of the biggest mistakes you're probably making in Dragon's Dogma 2 and exactly how to fix them. Starting with number one on this list, and that is exploration. Now, how you decide to explore the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 is up to you. Whether you focus on the main story, do nothing but side quests, or simply want to kill monsters, there's tons of different ways to play. But even so, there are a few important strategies you should always keep in mind. For one, you should always attempt to find and loot everything you can. This starts off in towns and villages where you should definitely take the time to look inside every single building because you'll find tons of useful items here, including ingredients for crafting and especially extra gold which you're going to need a lot of in this game. Seriously, I've found bags with up to 1500 gold just sitting on the table in somebody's house and nobody cares if you take these so there's no reason not to. If you're not smashing every crate, barrel, and pot in sight, that's another mistake because these can give you additional loot. Just destroy these to see what's inside, but exploration also extends out into the wild world of Dragon's Dogma 2, where you should be testing every side road and possible path because more treasure and interesting locations are just around the corner. Some of these hidden locations will be marked, making them easier to spot, like this hidden cave on the way to the capital, but the map marker will not appear until you've actually cleared out the surrounding fog of war. So again, exploration is key and going even slightly off the beaten path, while more challenging, will definitely bring you better rewards. But as you're out exploring, a huge mistake is going to be ignoring campsites. Now Capcom literally added dozens of campsites all over the Dragon's Dogma 2 map, and that's for good reason. That's because other than inns which are located in major towns, using a camp is the only other way to restore your health completely back to full, even restoring the damage your health bar normally takes during combat, which lowers your total health below its max. So it's actually very important to use these no matter what, even if you haven't been out adventuring for that long. Also don't miss out on the cooked food buffs that you can unlock by roasting meat at your campfire. These buff effects are actually pretty long lasting, and all you need is one piece of non-spoiled meat to take advantage of these extra stats. And believe me, you want to do this frequently as well because any meat you have in your inventory will spoil, making it much less useful. And better quality meats are also available, and these actually improve the bonus stats you get from cooking even further. But one example I found was aged meat, and this gave me a bonus of 4 to strength, defense, and stamina instead of the usual 3. And I also got a new stat bonus to recovery, which was even better. But regardless of what you cook, make sure to stop at every campsite and cook something, especially before you set out on your next adventure, to give you the best possible start. But of course, there will be times where you have to push through the wilderness without a campfire or campsite. And in those cases, you'll want to make sure to heal back to full after every combat encounter. Not getting back to full health in this game is a huge mistake because many enemies can unleash powerful attacks on you or your pawns that will quickly take you down in one to two hits. Now the best solution for this obviously is to have a mage in your party that can cast healing spells for free. Just call them over to you using the help command. But if you don't have a mage, you can also simply eat apples or berries or whatever you pick up from the surrounding vegetation, but also top off your health in between shorter battles. So I briefly mentioned pawns, but the pawn system is such a huge part of Dragon's Dogma 2 that you're bound to make a few mistakes here, especially if this is your first Dragon's Dogma title. And one very common mistake is missing out on your pawn commands. Now I already mentioned how you can use these commands to request help, such as getting healed from your mage, but you can also use it to send your pawns into combat ahead of you, which is useful if you are a ranged class yourself, like a mage or an archer. Now personally, I play the fighter vocation, so I tend to use the wait command just before a group of enemies, so I can rush in first, gain all the aggro, and then summon my companions to my side using the to me command. Now either way, the pawn commands do give you much better control of your party, so make sure to use these to your advantage. The wait command is also useful if you're about to attempt some particularly tricky jump or parkour section of the map so pawns don't get in your way, end up falling off a cliff or pushing you over at the same time, which actually happened to me. So yeah, the wait command is very helpful. But another mistake is not listening to your pawns as they make suggestions for locations to travel to. This will happen sometimes as you wander around the map, your pawns are going to remember some location that they've actually been to with other players. And an experienced pawn can even lead you to useful locations that you would have missed otherwise. Now when a pawn makes one of these suggestions, you can use the go command to tell them to guide you to that location, whether it's an undiscovered cave, a forgotten rift stone, or a hidden treasure chest. And it's usually not too far off, so spending a few seconds 
Letting your pawn guide you there can be well worth the effort. So obviously you have a main pawn in Dragon's Dogma 2 which follows you everywhere, but you also have those other two followers which are a bit less useful. In fact, these other two pawns don't even level up which leads us to our next mistake which is not hiring new pawns to replace them regularly. You see, because these other two pawns cannot level up, they won't get stronger and they will not gain stats or new abilities. In short, they will quickly become useless and a liability in combat. With that in mind, make sure you're regularly checking for new pawns and don't feel bad about dismissing your old crew. You'll have access to hundreds of pawns over the course of this game and your next epic companion is literally just around the corner. But as you're hiring a new pawn, another big mistake is only paying attention to that pawn's vocation and their cost. Now obviously a pawn's vocation is important when it comes to your team composition, but there's a lot more that pawns can offer that you need to be aware of and most of it is visible by simply tabbing through the various menus while browsing pawns within the rift. Now the first tab is obviously the vocation and the cost. This is pretty much what people just look at. But the next tab will actually show each pawn's inclination. So if you're looking specifically for a straightforward fighter or a kind-hearted mage, that's really easy to see from this tab without having to go up and talk to the pawn. Now the next tab over will let you see their equipped skills, which again is very useful uh, because some players don't even equip their pawns with skills other than the default. But the third tab is even more useful in my opinion as this displays any learned specializations like Woodland Wordsmith for example, whether or not the pawn can give you information on your current quest, that is the quest that you're currently working towards as a quest guide. And finally, whether or not this pawn has a quest themselves that you can complete for a reward. Now you can't actually see the reward until you talk to the pawn to see their details, but cycling through these screens ahead of time is gonna save you from clicking on every single pawn in the rift in order to get the information you need much faster. Now I just mentioned this, but another common mistake is not unlocking new abilities for yourself and especially your main pawn as you level up. Now this can be done as early as the town of Melv by speaking to the innkeeper and discussing vocation guilds, but it's here that you want to use your discipline points as soon as possible to unlock additional powerful weapon skills and vocation abilities which are going to make a huge difference for you right off the bat. And like I said, make sure you do this especially for your main pawn as well. They have their own pool of discipline points and they can distribute those to unlock new abilities, upgrades, and passives. This is a massively important step that you do not want to miss. But while you're out exploring, another mistake would be missing out on powerful pawns you can get completely for free. You can get these on occasion through repairing broken rift stones. These stones only show up out in the wild and typically at the end of a path or some dead end, but they're worth finding and fixing for a few reasons. First of all, they will give you free rift crystals for repairing them, which are going to quickly add up and help you hire better pawns or get pawn upgrades. But some of these broken rift stones actually unlock powerful pawns, which you can also hire completely for free like this one. Now, one thing new players might really struggle with in Dragon's Dogma 2 is definitely inventory management. But the biggest mistake here is simply not distributing your inventory between your pawns. Uh, for example, one of the heaviest items you'll need to bring with you at all times is your camping kit but the Arisen doesn't have to be the person that carries this. Instead, what I'll usually do is pass this off to my lightest pawn first, like a mage, since their armor is incredibly light and they're gonna have enough room in their inventory to carry this without being over encumbered. If you have a second camping kit, you can pass that to your second pawn and so on to distribute your weight more evenly among your entire party. Speaking of inventory management, another huge mistake here is never combining your ingredients and consumables to make better items. Now, as you adventure through Dragon's Dogma 2, you'll be picking up tons of consumable items and ingredients. But there are even multiple versions of these, so you could actually run out of space very quickly if you're not careful. But to help reduce the amount of items in your inventory and also reduce your carry weight, you should definitely try to combine these items as often as possible using the combine menu, which is also conveniently located in the same inventory screen. Now, once you access this menu, you can experiment with making new items or you can use existing recipes. But the great thing about item combinations is that the effects are usually much stronger, for example, resulting in greater healing or stamina return. And the resulting items that you craft typically weigh less than whatever it is you combine in the first place, helping to reduce your overall carrying weight. So we've talked about items, consumables, and your inventory, but a very easy mistake to make right away is buying the wrong items for your vocation from a vendor. That's because when you're browsing the vendor's screen, they show you everything possible, everything they're selling, 
regardless of the vocation that can use it. And so it looks like every item may actually be an improvement over what you currently have as indicated by these blue numbers on the right which are going up. But that's not the case, you can actually only equip whatever works for your current vocation. Now the game does make it this distinction in the vendor screen and it's with these red symbols next to the item. Any item with a symbol cannot be equipped by your current vocation so you know it's not worth your time even if the stats look like a solid improvement. But the final mistake you might be making in Dragon's Dogma 2 is forgetting to upgrade those weapons and armor. First of all, just a quick bonus tip for those that pre-ordered the game, those pre-order weapons, which are significantly better than what you get at the start of the game, will be in storage. You can unlock this at the first inn that you come across, but let's talk about upgrades. Now, upgrading your weapons and armor in Dragon's Dogma 2 is incredibly easy. Most items can be upgraded a total of three times, and this only costs some minor gold and upgrade materials like Goblin's Teeth, which you'll probably already have in your inventory anyway. In fact, the first upgrade in the sequence of three doesn't even require materials, it only needs gold to complete, so this is a no-brainer. Just head to the weapons or armor dealer in town, either one of these will do. Now the upgrade screen will even tell you which materials you need to complete the next upgrade, but the best thing about upgrading your gear is not the increased damage or the increased armor, it's that each upgrade you complete actually reduces the weight of that item, which really makes a difference, especially if you're a heavy armor user and you upgrade all of your pieces. But that is it, 13 early mistakes that you might be making in Dragon's Dogma 2. If there's any more mistakes that I missed, make sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And check out this next video where I talk about even more Dragon's Dogma 2 secrets, and I will see you there.